What's going on everyone, good morning. Um, so today I'm just gonna take you through my full day of eating. I'm also gonna throw a workout in there as well. So it's gonna be sort of my first sort of vlog, I guess. In terms of macros, I don't tend to hit macros on a day-to-day -day basis. I don't tend to hit a certain number, but I, there was a time I did track my macros, and then now I just sort of know how much food I should be eating just by, because I did used to track them. I'm going to show you guys my diet while I'm in bulk, so I'm quite a hard gainer, which means that I need to eat an extra few calories than certain other people just because of my fast metabolism and things like that. So everyone's diet will be different. Some people won't need to eat as much as I will. Some people may need to eat more than I will while, while on a bulk. But yeah, so I've just got Megan helping me this morning just preparing my first meal, which is going to be a four egg omelette, um, two slices of ham in there, and mixed vegetables as well. Okay guys, so I've got, as I said, I've got a four egg omelette, uh, two slices of ham, and mixed vegetables. Guys, my macros were there, I can't remember, but I'll put them on the screen now. Okay guys, so that is my first meal. I like to start my day off with a higher protein and I tend to get my carbs in after my workout. So the macros for this meal I'll put on the screen now as well. They say hi to Megan's dog. Oh, you say hi. Okay guys, so it is nearly 10.30. So meal two is just 60 grams of oats flavored with 10 grams of honey. I'm just gonna enjoy that while catching up on some YouTube videos. I absolutely destroyed that guys. Time to show up with Megan for a bit and then I'm gonna smash the rest of my day. Okay guys, so me and Megan are gonna to drive to the gym, gonna pick up a monster on the way because he can't do a YouTube workout without one and I'll see you guys there. Okay guys, so I just got to the gym and I'm gonna build a push-up today, so chest, shoulders, and triceps. Not gonna have a lot of accessory movements in there today, mainly focusing on compound movements, one or two accessory movements, but I hope you guys enjoy. Okay, so I'm just going to show you guys a few reps and sets of my push workout. I started this workout with some bad double ability work to warm up my chest and my shoulders and then some light dumbbell work to warm up my upper, sorry, to warm up my rotator cuffs. So as soon as I started to work out, I felt tightness in my right shoulder knew I was going to be able to lift as heavy as I wanted to. Because this was filmed three days ago, I actually had another push session today and the weights I was lifting in this video flew up and there was no tightness in my shoulder at all, so I don't think it was anything to worry about. Since the start of the new year, I changed my split to push pull legs and then repeat that again, so I train six days a week. Because I changed my split, I decided to change the training system I use, making this the closest I've been to strength training in a while. And you'll probably look at see and see that I'm doing three sets of eight and think that's nowhere near strength training, as the rep range is too high. But before the new year, I was using more advanced hypertrophy protocols and I might have been doing sort of 30 reps a set with less rest between my sets. And obviously when you're hitting that sort of rep range, your weight is going to be a lot lighter than if you're doing eight sets, or sorry, sets of eight. Before the new year, I was constantly changing my workout in terms of reps and sets, but I've decided to just stick to three sets of eight and occasionally doing supersets or drop sets. I started this workout with incline bench press because my upper chest isn't as developed as my mid chest. And this is my fault because when I first started training, I didn't know the chest was made up of three heads. So I just used to do flat bench. So now I mostly concentrate on incline and decline bench press to bring up the lagging parts of my chest. The incline bench I was using was fixed and the incline was too high. I prefer having the bench at a very slight incline because if the incline is too high, you end up hitting your front delts too much. And I couldn't use the other benches or the adjustable benches because they were all being taken at the time. So in terms of technique when you're doing any bench press, have your feet flat on the ground and drive through your hips. Your back should be slightly arched and shoulder blades retracted. Don't let the bar bounce off your chest and lats should be tight and elbows slightly drawn in. A lot of people don't keep their elbows drawn in and it can put a lot of stress on your shoulders and a lot of people end up with shoulder injuries because of it. After incline bench I then moved on to flat bench because as I said earlier I haven't, been, I haven't done a lot of flat bench recently and I usually do at least one dumbbell fly movement but because of the tightness in my shoulder I decided not to. I did a variation of um, cable flies at the end of the workout which you will see later. 
after chest I moved on to shoulders and as always when I'm going into a different compound movement I started with a bar with no weight. The overhead press is an incredible mass, bu mass builder so if you're looking to build strong shoulders, chest and arms while working the rest of your body I always advise people to do this movement. The press help improves the efficiency in your overall upper body strength meaning the improved numbers in your bench press, uh, chin ups, rows and other exercise. So if you're plateauing in any of those try focusing on the press for a few weeks and see how much it helps. A lot of people complain about lower back pain when doing this movement and the simple way to solve that is slightly bending your knees so it takes stress off your lower back. Another tip I have for when pressing is to engage and tense your glutes. So I did a couple sets of the overhead press and then started to feel some tightness in my upper back so I did some banded mobility work again to try and release that and then on my last set I put the weight up and did a drop set. I then went on to seated shoulder press and instead of having the bench upright I put it back at a slight angle to hit my front delts more. The shoulders made up of three heads so on push days I train the front and side or lateral delt and on pull days I work on my rear delt. Tell you she loves you, but you've been drinking too much. But you don't quit, instead, you rather fuss. Then take it to the point to where she can. So, after three sets of shoulder press, I then moved on to lateral raises. The key to targeting your delts right in this movement is pulling through the elbow, not your hands. So, using your elbow to pull the weight up. After three sets of those, I moved on to scroll, skull crushers with a twist at the top. I did two sets, and then on my third set, I did a superset with barbell extension. So, the third tricep exercise I used was a tricep rope extension. I did three sets close to the machine, and three sets taking a few steps back to target the triceps from a different angle. I then finished my workout with three different variations of cable flies to target my chest. Okay, so post-workout, the workout was decent enough. Ha right shoulder was feeling a bit tight, but I've had some mobility issues with it. Um, yeah, me and Megan were going to go back to the house and create, make some food in the house, but we decided that... I decided I want to show you guys that you can enjoy food eating out while you're on a belt. You may have also noticed straight after my workout, I'm not going to have a protein shake. And the reason for that is, um, I used to when I was younger, but I've done my research and realized it's your total protein intake for the day that counts, not the timing of your protein intake, or you don't need to have protein immediately after your workout. So that's why I'm not having a shake. And I will have a bit of protein with my lunch, and my protein will mostly come again from a dinner. I had a high protein breakfast as well. just had some duck dumplings, now I'm having yaki udon with extra chicken and it basically is just chicken, vegetables and some noodles. Meg got the exact same but with better noodles. So yeah, it's still pretty healthy guys but it tastes delicious. So we're back in the kitchen guys, I have 230 grams of steak, 250 grams of potato and a portion of vegetables. The potato and the vegetables I made earlier and then I'm just about to cook up the steak so I will show you that when it's done. Okay guys, you're probably bored since it's been out but bear with me. I'm just going to have a nighttime snack of 150 grams of Greek yogurt. I'm going to add 10 grams of honey, a small handful of blueberries and some cinnamon there as well just for taste. And the main focus of this video guys was to show you that if you can have a varied diet, you can enjoy your food as well when you're trying to make get results and the, the gains that you want. You don't just have to have broccoli, chicken, rice six times a day to get those results. 
I hope you enjoyed this video guys, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, comment below and subscribe. I'll see you next time guys.